screen capture, keyboard input, and a hacky way to install stuff. Stick around to the end to hear about the robot I'm working on. Out of the box, the Librem 5 has an on-screen keyboard that looks and feels good. You do have the option to switch out the default for some alternatives. At the moment, this is the only alternative that I know about. The default is a bit better looking. Bluetooth is also a good option to connect a keyboard. Using this mini keyboard mouse thing, I'm able to enter text in X11 windows as well as native Wayland windows. Mouse input also feels at home on the Librem 5. Let's see how many Firefox tabs the Librem 5 can open. Okay. Not bad. Something that really took me by surprise is when I press the key combo Control alt f one On a desktop computer, I would expect that to take you to the first virtual terminal. And that's precisely what the Librem 5 did. After I was done poking around, Control alt f 7 takes you back to the GUI session, also just like a normal Linux computer. If you want to use your desktop keyboard, a USB hub will be supported at some point, but it's not working just yet. You can, however, use a program called X2X, which by default will allow you to use your Linux computer mouse and keyboard on any X11 app running on the Librem 5. I wrote this small hack around script that allows X2X to work with the native Wayland windows. It does need a bug fix for X11 windows, though. But it does work pretty well for most use cases. After messing around with a few screen capture tools, I managed to find one that works on the Librem 5. It takes a few minutes to set up, but once it's done, you can record video natively on the Librem 5. You can see it does drop a few frames when the workload is high, but it does get the point across nicely. Community Apps has seen an update. It now allows you to install FlatHub packages that are listed on this wiki. It's not hard to create apps for the Librem 5, and it's not hard to get on this wiki. You just need to post at this user form, pointing everyone at your code. It's also a good idea to package as Flatpak or .deb. I prefer packaging as .deb, but Flatpak is well documented and much more popular at the moment. I should also mention, the key that Open Repos uses is too old for pure OS. Because of this, I force app to ignore the bad key and install anyway. This is fine for the initial installation, but it breaks updating from the software store. The simplest solution is to remove the offending package before you run updates. I'm also working on a free and open source cat toy. It's a robot I'm building with my roommate. The goal here is to entertain cats and dogs or whatever is willing to chase a laser. The robot is built from a few parts. An x86 powerhouse is used for image processing. It pulls its images from a USB webcam. This is where things get interesting. The x86 machine is also attached to a Raspberry Pi over a serial USB connection. When the Raspberry Pi starts up, it auto runs a program called Laser Control Module, or LCM for short. Its job is to listen for commands over serial and manage two servo motors. The servo motors take PWM frequencies as input. In turn, the servos move to an angle based on the frequency which is why I have a pre-configured max and min PWM value, more or less, and the hardware might pop off a servo. The hardware limits are further restrained to things only in frame by the x86 machine. Here are some example commands that the controller takes. It's how much we want to change the PWM frequency for X and Y. It also has a value for how bright the laser is, but this isn't hooked up in hardware yet. This is the command the x86 computer uses to limit the hardware restraints to things only in camera. The main program running on the x86 machine has three main threads. This thread is spun off to update the video. This thread updates the laser position based on an AI routine. And the main loop is processing the video into something the AI function can understand. The AI is very simple and needs a bit of work. The pink dot is where the software thinks the laser is. 
the green dot indicates the center of movement. I had it configured to use the mouse location as extra input for the laser. This was a lot of fun to play with, but for some reason this line of code leaked memory like mad. So I ended up disabling mouse input and added arrow keys to move the laser around. I didn't account for the dog's tail wagging so much. It is definitely throwing off the center of movement. I might have to toss that idea or maybe take a longer average. I know this content is a bit different than my norm, but everything I made here is free software and can be found in my Bitbucket. Thanks for watching. Bye.